My name is Rana Abdul Hamid. I'm from Queens, New York, and I'm the co-creator of the Women's Online Safety Hackathon and series. I personally experienced online violence. Um, I've been active in the gender-based violence space for almost 10 years now. Two years ago, I was trolled online. I experienced really violent, racist, but gendered um, language that was meant to you know, target many parts of my identity and like silence my activity and engagement online. Um, I was part of an online um, beauty campaign, actually. It wasn't, um, it had nothing to do with my identity at all. Um, but I was, I'm visibly Muslim because I'm wearing hijab. And because of that, um, some of the consumers of the product that I was in a marketing campaign for um, were actually very angered by how I dressed. And as a result, wanted to boycott this company um, and started to write really racist, Islamophobic, but also um, a lot of violent gendered commentary that was directed at me um, and also threatened my life. And so it was a really scary time because I felt so out of control. Like I, like part of me wanted to be able to ignore it, but part of me recognized how public my profile online is and how much information people had and um, how that could really hurt, dam like hurt me and hurt people I loved. Um, and also it was, it was difficult for me to see um, people who I deeply cared about go in and have to comment back and engage and like um, also be impacted by that language because it was language that was inflammatory to my identity. It was very interesting the way people were reacting to the fact that I was experiencing this because it was very public and there were articles written about the experience because it was that extreme. And every time I, was t I would tell people about it, they would just be like, you know, ignore the comments. Don't think about it, it's online. It's not real life, these are trolls, they're not real people. Um, this is just the internet, right? This is the comment section, this is how it is. On a rational level, I was like, yeah, that's true. But on an emotional level, it was very hard to actually ignore it. It was very difficult. Um, like it physically impacted me, it emotionally impacted me. Um, and I think a lot of women, we kind of struggle with that reality of like, this is online, we should be able to divorce ourselves from that. But also like, these are our feelings and this is our reality and these are words that are impacting our identities, right? At a very deep level. And we know also that that threat online can translate offline, right? And those two things are very interconnected because of how the virtual world is our real world nowadays. A very good afternoon to all of you. Thank you for joining us for the Women and Allies online safety training. I'm happy to be uh, facilitating this session along with Arya Murli. Uh, hi, Arya. Hey, Laksha. Hey, everyone. Nice to meet you. Great. So um, here's what we have for you. Uh, firstly, why are we doing this training? What is, what is this all about? Um, this workshop is actually developed to equip uh, women and allies uh, with both skills and tech-based solutions, which would help them uh, be more secure online, right? And it's and the reason why allies is such a crucial part is because um, in order to increase your awareness, all of us should really come together to fight something like online violence. Um, some session norms, because we are in a virtual setting is uh, please practice critical compassion. What do I mean is while we're engaging um, or while you are engaging with us through chat, please ensure that you disagree with someone's idea, but not with that person, right? Um, please be extremely self-compassionate and ready to grow. There might be um, instances in the session covered which might be very disturbing uh, to you all, maybe because of some personal experiences so feel free to drop off for a couple of minutes and join back. Um, please be as present as possible. And if you want to share something with us, use the chat box to engage with us. 
um confidentiality is something important especially because this is such a sensitive topic so if something is sharing their personal story which we'll have um a few folks in addition to me and arya sharing our experiences uh please do not share it with anyone else without their explicit permission and like i said take care of yourself some of this content might be heavy for you um you know please join us and get with uh, get through uh, uh, get through this con session content along with us and ensure if you have any questions if you have any experiences feel free to leverage the chat box to share them with us right um, so how does how does this look like uh, we've sort of um, modeled this into three phases the first one being more about awareness how can we uh, you know understand what the real challenge is and um, we'll do a couple of activities a couple of defining and case studies that we'll talk about uh, which is very relevant in the field of online violence uh we then share with you some tips and tools to help you stay safe online uh this could be behavioral this could be technical um you know some of the tools that already exist there for us to just be aware and use it and finally we will um you know have a couple of more folks joining us answering their views on you know what does it take to stay safe online what are the few of the online behaviors that they've noticed we're also going to cover uh, issues like cyber crime which will probably help a lot of us uh, when we have similar experiences um finally i um i think before we start uh, before we get into the real content uh, i would really urge all of you to use your use the chat box the youtube chat box and tell us what is it that really brings you to this training right what were your expectations when you heard of women and allies online safety training uh what did you think this would be or if you have any uh, you know expectations out of this session please put them and we'll see how we can address majority of those points through the session uh with that i think um let me begin with some data right uh, what is the status of women online and this research um, you know while it is um, you know done with women globally i'll also touch upon some aspects which are more um, around uh, women in india right so some of the stats that came out from a research that jigsaw did was women are 27 times more likely to experience online violence than men right uh 50% of these women unfortunately fear for their physical safety because of something really untoward happening to them online and 28% of women who uh, sort of experienced online abuse purposefully reduced their um presence online because they were not comfortable right and 75% of them actually changed their social media habits now why we are specifically talking about gender this could be relevant to anyone right um and and tech is so communal like we all contribute be it be it that open source be it product building be it stack overflow answering those stack overflow questions i think each of our perspectives is so important and if you have 75% of women who sort of are not engaging really engaging in social media because of the fear of being safe online i think that's something of critical concern right um so yes some of the stats specific to india is um especially women in the public eye right people who are really famous they they experience a lot of online harassment and and with everybody moving to the virtual world i think um a topic like this is of much more relevance today so 97% of female journalists report they experience gendered harassment online and one in seven tweets are directed at female politicians in india uh, especially including gendered abuse what this goes out to say is security and harassment are probably two big barriers to women coming online right and to talk to us about some of the uh, you know some of the critical uh, behaviors that really personify online violence i would hand it over to arya to uh, take us through the next few slides over to you arya thank you so 
thank you so much, uh, Lakshya. So I hope my slides are visible. Right. So as you can see, there are you know a bunch of different ways in which online violence can appear, and uh, I know that it is overwhelming to see these uh, listed in the first slide, but we'll take it uh, one by one and go through them with the help of some examples, so that you know it really helps us understand um, these better. And uh, while these words may look um, confusing or, or big and difficult to comprehend, the idea is to empower you with the language that you really need to recognize what you're going through and how you're feeling, right? Um, so that's the purpose of um, going through these different types here. Now, before I begin, again, here's a trigger note. Um, we will be talking about some of these examples of abuse or harassment online, and um, it might um, be disturbing to some of you, uh, especially if you've had uh, previous experience. Um, so if you're not uh, comfortable with any of this, feel free to step out uh, for a moment, uh, come back, join us anytime you feel comfortable. Um, but uh, here's a word of caution for you. So take care of yourself. Uh, now, the first one here, um, I hope you can see my uh, screen and the screenshot. So, you know, it's been explicitly written uh, over an email. And this is a personal example, by the way. This is something somebody sent to me. And uh, this person admitted that uh, he has been stalking me uh, online, right? And there were very detailed explanations of uh, the places I visited, the things I did uh, during my holidays and in my free time everything that I posted on uh, these platforms. And um, that was uh, extremely scary, uh, to say the least. And as a uh, small side note, if you look at the second line, you'll see how the person says that, you know, I only do it uh, for your good. I have not manipulated anyone, but I manipulate people only if it is good for them. So you will see uh, that some of these people take up the role of a protector or a caregiver and sort of uh, you know, uh, mention that whatever they're doing is for your safety and your well-being. Um, this is a trait that you should watch out for in uh, people who claim so. Uh, and this is an example, a perfect example of stalking and harassment um, as well. Moving on, I'm sure you must have seen several of these cases on Facebook or other uh, social media platforms as, as well, where somebody actually takes your picture or your identity and uh, uses it to create another profile, um, impersonate you, um, basically. And this is an example of Shreya Krishnan. She is a marketing professional and also um, a, a Mrs. India Universe title award winner. And she has several of these examples where you know, she is she, she's actually called out people who have used her pictures uh, to create fake accounts and you know have fake friends and what whatnot on Facebook. So this is an example of impersonation. More examples posted by Shreya. Um, LinkedIn, I'm sure, is uh, one platform where all of us uh, are are on, and you know, we somehow can't seem to get out of LinkedIn as well for the sake of our professional lives. Um, but I have seen time and again um, several cases where women have come back to say that you know, if they uh, write to somebody or send a connection note with a uh, maybe personal note, uh, you know, that, hey, I'd love to get connected for the sake of a partnership for a job. Um, people typically respond and ask for contact numbers of these young women. And I've had people in my own network say that these people go on to send uh, really pathetic messages over, you know, um, WhatsApp or ask these people out, um, especially when they're just strangers and, and usually much younger than them, right? And more so when these women have not expressed any interest in them whatsoever. So uh, it is, uh, I mean, LinkedIn is becoming yet another Tinder according to several articles online. And um, it's definitely something that you should watch out for. And this is an example of, you know, somebody sending you inappropriate or obscene messages. And um, be mindful that, you know, this example is LinkedIn. But having said that, this can happen across any platform, Facebook or uh, Instagram or whichever one you would you know, you are on. Now, this uh, other example here um, is based on Twitter. And you I'm sure you would recognize um, the amazing lady in the picture. She's our former uh, Minister of External Affairs, uh, Srimati Sushma Suraj. And um, unfortunately, you know, she had a lot of people send in, again, gendered 
uh, comments. Um, and if you look at this particular one, this, this gentleman has written that, you know, when she comes home tonight, why don't you beat her up? So this is him propagating violence as well online. Um, and this is an example of sexist hate speech, um, which is essentially an expression um, done to, you know, promote or justify hatred based on sex or gender, such as it could include rape or death, thre death threats as well. Um, again, another example here, um, this is an example of mobbing where a bunch of uh, different people, you know, choose somebody and target them online and, and bully or harass them online um, collectively. Um, you know, and this could not just be five people doing it, but, you know, hundreds of thousands of uh, people. And this sort of is um, an example that maybe Rana also shared in her video, right, where a bunch of different folks come in and troll you um, collectively. And, and that is an example of, of mobbing there as well. This example is something I'm sure you're familiar with. Uh, you've heard about it at some point um, in the last six months, maybe. Um, and, you know, somebody using your picture and uh, uh, sort of editing uh, parts of it out and adding um, something in, basically modify it in any form using technology um, or any other tactics that is um, to sort of defame you, uh, to um, malign you or your image or your identity um, and then also share it, um, you know, without your consent or any of that is um, actually what is called malicious distribution. So somebody's doing that with a malicious intent uh, right there. And this is a good example of that. Um, now, this is a very uh, sad example personally for me as well. I mean, this is a story of a 13-year-old autistic boy, Ryan. Um, and he, uh, you know, I think in middle school or so, uh, spoke to a girl who he had a crush on. And she actually ridiculed him uh, because he's autistic. And he had a pen pal, apparently. and. Um, in their conversations, this pen pal encouraged Ryan to suicide, and he did, um, which is an extremely disturbing and unfortunate story. And this is an example of cyberbullying um, and how it how badly it can affect uh, some people. This example here is that of bombing. Um, bombing is basically posting you know, misinformation or uh, malicious information about you uh, deliberately online um, so that when somebody searches for you or Googles you or is trying to find you, they they consume this negative information first and, you know, form a very um, uh, different perception of you. So the example here is that of David, and he actually found out that there existed a website that shamed him and his family um you know all over the internet and if anybody would search for him um this is what they would uh, discover in the first place right and and he actually received a bunch of hate emails because uh, of this website and because of all of these people coming together to sort of uh, harm him uh now this example right here is something that i'm sure a lot of uh women particularly maybe in um, relationships have encountered so uh, if you are in a relationship and or, or if you have a, a friend or a family member even who is, uh, you know, even asked you for your passwords, uh, who has asked you for access to your accounts, um, then this is called surveillance or breach of privacy as well. So essentially it is using technology to stalk you or monitor your activities and your behaviors um, either in real time um, as in when uh, you are online and when you're live uh, on the internet or uh, looking at your past conversations or your past activity. So that is an example of surveillance. Um, I would really love you, love for you to um, read this slide, um, just giving a moment there so that you read. Now this is an example of what's called catfishing, where somebody uh, misrepresents themselves online and uses a fake picture or a fake uh, profile, fake information, with the intention of uh, you know building a relationship with somebody. Um, 
this again can happen um, as a result of impersonation, right? Like in Shreya's example, like we were talking about um, somebody, you know, stealing her pictures and maybe they're using this uh, as a means of building a relationship with somebody else, right? So catfishing that is. Um, and this particular example is where a 20 year old German hacker, he hacked into, <clears throat> sorry, profiles of German politicians and uh, took out their personal information, including their addresses and, and tweeted it. Um, and this behavior of revealing personal identifiable information, so any information that can uniquely identify you, like your, including your full name, your address, your phone number, your email, information about your family members uh, or any such information to cause fear or create stress um, or panic in you. This is called as doxing, right? Um, I'm sure uh, it must be interesting for you to know that, uh, you know, there are actual legit names uh, to sort of identify these um, online behaviors or online, these ways of online violence. Um, with that, um, I want to share a bunch of my own personal learnings um, from having gone through, uh, you know, uh, online abuse and harassment from trolls um, to including a very uh, disturbing experience that I had. So the first thing is to not dismiss your gut feeling. Um, you know, and this is something that a psychologist told me uh, in one of our sessions. And uh, the, the, the case was such that I was always feeling uncomfortable around this particular person because of his behaviors. But I took my feelings for granted. And I thought that, you know, uh, maybe uh, I'm wrong, maybe because this person has a certain stature and uh, ha you know, has some credibility. Maybe he is right and I'm not. I'm just a kid. Right. So I um, ignored my gut feelings. And that's one of my biggest mistakes. So try and avoid that. Um, listen to yourself. And if you are uncomfortable, remove yourself from, um, you know, those kinds of environments. Second is beware of cycles of abuse. So uh, there is actually a term called a cycle of abuse. And if you Google it, I'm sure you could read more. But essentially, what you will, uh, what it is, is that, you know, somebody is very nice to you. And then some tension starts developing between both of you, some fights, some issues, maybe. And then they maybe lash out um, at you. And they say mean things. They abuse you. Maybe uh, they physically uh, abuse you or using their language. Uh, but after that, they become the sweethearts that they always were, right? Um, they become nice. They apologize. They say that they did it out of their concern um, because they want you to have a good life and things like that and make you believe that they did it for your good. And then this repeats, right? And the moment you start believing them and start, uh, start trusting in them, again, another thing crops up and the cycle goes on, right? So uh, even if somebody is good to you, uh, but is periodically not good to you, is abusing you or harassing you in any form, uh, just be mindful of um, what we call the cycle of abuse. And maybe it does sig uh, signal a larger issue um, and that, that you know, you should really pay attention to, right? Uh, the third one is to build a support system. And it is extremely difficult uh, to go through violence or any kind of bullying or harassment uh, in itself, but it's even more difficult to go through it alone. Um, so always have a network of people who can help you stay grounded, uh, who can support you, be your backbone throughout. Um, and this will really help you, you know, in at least preventing um, these things or, or even tackling it uh, once you have uh, encountered such uh, such issues, right? And more importantly, I think it's also very helpful in recognizing abuse because when somebody who knows you well can um, sort of observe what you're going through and give you their unbiased third party opinion, I think that can also be a very useful way of recognizing that you are going through abuse. The fourth one is to be aware of your loss and rights. Um, uh, I mean, even before that is to be able to identify that you're going through abuse, like I was saying, and I'm sure this uh, session is going to help you in identifying and, and vocalizing some of that. And in the, in the later part of this um, session, we will be talking about, you know, your uh, couple of the Indian laws and uh, the rights you have uh, you have access to as a citizen. Um, so be aware of those and know that 
online abuse is not right. It's not good. Um, and that you must take action against it. Um, and five is collect proof. Um, never let go of evidence. Um, it will come in handy. Again, we'll talk more about this in the later part. And finally, don't hesitate uh, to act, to call it out. Um, it takes a lot of us to uh, really step up and you know um, make our points heard, uh, make our voice heard. So if you have gone through some something like this, which I hope you have not, but if you have, please do take um, action. Um, with this, I hand it over back to Lakshya. Thank you so much, Arya. I think uh, it takes a lot of courage to uh, sort of speak about personal experiences like this. So thank you so much. Um, I'm, I'm now going to get a few people on stage to answer uh, this question along with us. But I would love if any of you want to express your thoughts, please use the chat box on sharing with us what are some of the ways in which you have witnessed, um, you know, women's safety being threatened online. Uh, and if that is something that you're comfortable in sharing, uh, please do let us know in the chat box. While I would love to invite Prane and Prachi to join uh, along with Arya. Um, on, um, you know, and, and just share their thoughts on what have their experiences been um, while they have, uh, you know, witnessed women's safety being threatened online. Prane, I know you are such a strong ally. So I want to start with you. What are your thoughts on this one? Prane, you're on mute. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, hi, Laksha. Um, thank you so much for having me. And hats off to Arya for sharing her personal experiences. I definitely 100% I agree with you. It takes a lot of courage. Even while she was presenting, I could collect some of these incidents and map of when uh, things have been bad for either me or people in my circle. And uh, I think there are two facets to this question. Uh, there's this one facet wherein uh, I, I believe that uh, Every every platform is that you see online, be it Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, any any platform that you join, and there are definitely there are people who uh, want to harass you. I mean, a, a good day for a woman is when she is not being harassed, right? I mean, you go online, you post anything online, there are people who just out there trolling you for no reason at all. Simply, maybe they have the bias, maybe they don't have enough, maybe they aren't educated enough uh, to realize this. Uh, for example, say any any platform where you know you're just checking with your friends, uh, say Instagram, and then people are you know, taking your pictures out, posting them, morphing them, taking them back to something like boys' locker room, and then uh, absolutely creating a mess out of it. Uh, such such rowdy behavior that way, and then there are platforms such as LinkedIn, wherein uh, you go in there with the professional expectation and instead of building professional relation, you still get those people who are there to make a mockery out of the platform. And uh, definitely it's it's not a helpful and, uh, and a healthy relation uh, or, or not a healthy stature to be uh, present online. And then if even if you are young, young right, just being unlimited or being, being on something like LinkedIn or Facebook, Instagram, that doesn't even matter, right? Even if you're as young, young girls such as let's say age eight or nine or 10, 11, 12, whatever, right? You'd be you're starting out your teenage. I just can't comprehend, right? I mean, it's just difficult for me to comprehend how much of an impact does that abuse cause for a woman uh, at such an early age, which brings me to a second facet to it, which is that as a guy, it is hard for me to realize uh, how much does this really mean, right? Because uh, it's actually a privilege that I don't get to see it online, but any woman that you pick in my circle and I can talk to my, any of my friends or my previous partners or anyone, anyone, right? My sister or anyone, such uh, unthoughtful uh, or no unfriendly texts are being sent every day. And then they just have to deal with it. It just gets emotionally burdening and it's hard. It's not just limited to people say who hate you, right? They could be your friends who share a different bias, or maybe they share a different religious opinion, maybe they share a different political opinion about you. Uh, 
I have seen it to a point wherein uh, harassment doesn't even stop at at your friends. It comes within the family wherein there are relatives who want to uh, harm you in any in any uh, unfriendly fashion. Uh, there have been instances that I have seen wherein uh, parents and parents wherein they want to find a potential groom for their young daughters, uh, whatever is say in the Indian social structure called marriageable age, uh, kind of without her consent, distribute her uh, contact information and definitely think of that girl who's trying to focus on a career and then she's getting random texts from guys who are saying that, you know, your parents gave me this number and I just want to marry you. Uh, and then repeatedly texting over, changing numbers, switching numbers. Uh, same people, it is just definitely, uh, it's it's horrible. Uh, even in a very professional work environment, I've, I've seen this one instance wherein uh, I was to join a meeting and then I had a female colleague who's just a fresher, just starting out a career. Uh, and I was on call with the client, right? I mean, I was, I was definitely on a, I, on a call with my client. And uh, I joined a bit five minutes late and this guy was throwing around his, whatever fashion or foodie page that he had. And it's just, it's so funny uh, and how unprofessional of him. And actually like there's absolutely no space to feel online. And I feel that it it does require this education and this con conscious realization that, hey, this is not how you behave online or say offline or in any decent format. Uh, uh, I think it it is very important to be an ally today to stop anything that you see as is harming someone's integrity. Uh, people deliberately trying to distort someone's uh, image or creating a situation wherein they tend to lose their uh, basic self in all the negativity around them and, and this targeted negativity uh, and this negativity also, right? It's strategic in nature where you pull in a lot of people as, as Arya mentioned, so many cases and how many formats does it come? It definitely, I, it's it's hard. So yeah, that that's my take. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, Pramay, for sharing. And I think you, you brought a very important aspect of uh, why uh, some, you know, content like this is not uh, for a particular gender because each of us, uh, it's it's so important for each of us to to know what's you know what are the laws what is what is toxic what is impersonation because you never know whom it will help you right it could probably help one of us in our own uh, friend circle or you know even even in family so thank you for sharing uh, those experiences uh, I would head over to Prachi next uh, to hear her thoughts. So uh, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for sharing, Pranay. Uh, really a nice uh, incident. Uh, I have one. Uh, with, I have witnessed one thing, and this time the target wasn't a female. Uh, this is because uh, it was a funny incident uh, that at workplace we had a person who made a female account uh, on of uh, Facebook, and he was adding young uh, teenage boys uh, in that account. Uh, and you know uh, he had some inappropriate photographs of that lady from the internet and then uh, you know trying to make friends and make fun of those people uh, of those boys who he has added so yes uh, so this was something like it wasn't a threat or something but yes he was he was using someone else's uh, pictures and then making young boys as his victims and then you know chatting with uh, chatting chatting with them so this is what i witnessed right thanks thanks prachi um yeah uh, arya any any thoughts you would like to add be the experiences anything you want to add? sure so i absolutely echo um you know, Pranay's uh, sentiments here, where he said, right, I mean, it's, it's a good day for women if nothing happens on that day. Um, and just to uh, go a bit more deep into my own personal experience, like, uh, unfortunately for me, um, harassment came from somebody who I knew, who I worked with, who I considered uh, to be a mentor of mine. 
uh, for a very long time. And um, it so happened that, uh, you know, he started stepping a lot into my personal space where I started feeling very uncomfortable, um, started saying things like, why can't we plan your future together, um, <laughs> which was completely uncalled for. And so having sensed several of these instances, I started distancing myself from him and had not uh, been in touch for a very long time, uh, in fact. And out of the blue, I would get calls at 1 AM at night. Um, and after that, one day I get 120 emails from this individual. Um, apparently, he retained an email in my name, in his personal domain, has been sending personal notes as if he's speaking to me to that email address uh, all through um, the period that I was not in touch with. And one day he somehow decided to forward all of that to me. And uh, if you recall the initial screenshot that I showed you, um, you know, where it was mentioned that I've been stalking you on WhatsApp and Instagram. And, um, you know, there were instances where he would say that, hey, I saw that you baked today. I saw that you were at this place today. Um, and, and a lot of those things uh, were extremely disturbing uh, for me, right? Um, now, just to sort of go back to two data points that Lakshya pointed out in her initial slides. Um, one is 50% women fear their physical safety when they go through online violence. And I was actually in the same city as this individual at the time uh, when all these emails came in. And I was living alone in an apartment. And I cannot uh, express the kind of fear I had. Um, you know, what if he comes knocking on my door? Who am I going to call it? And I would paste numbers of the police station of uh, my friends and people close to me, my neighbors. and you know, read that every night and go to sleep just in case I have to call somebody up at an odd time. So that's one. And anywhere I would see, you know, a car similar to the one he owned, I would get scared. I would feel that somebody's following me. Um, so I want to echo that, you know, it is real, right? People who go through online violence actually fear for their safety in, in the physical real world as well. And the second one is how 28 percent um, you know, women decrease their online presence because of abuse. And I remember having seen all of those, um, you know, him citing how what I had been doing online and in my in my life, I deliberately removed every single follower of mine from Instagram. I stopped posting anything for a very, very long time um, I, until I actually reported to the police and I started feeling comfortable about it. You know, that's when I actually came back online and started being more active, right? So from somebody who was extremely active, who believed that I must use each of these platforms well to build my own personal brand, to stay connected with my family and friends, to feeling extremely threatened just by the idea of, of existing in those platforms. Um, that was uh, very, very painful. But like I said, there is light uh, on the other side of things. It's not going to stay this way forever. Um, and I have learned that uh, the hard way. And I've, the, the most important realization I've had is that people are empathetic. People are understanding. Um, and people want to help. Um, and it is on us to reach out and ask for that uh, help. So that's about it uh, from my end. And I'm sure we'll speak more about you know, how can we help somebody going through abuse? How can we help ourselves if we're going through abuse? Um, and I'm, I'm hoping that it's uh, going to be really useful for people. Thank you so much, uh, Arya, for sharing. And thanks, Rane and Prachi, for joining us. Uh, we'll get you back very soon. Uh, we have a couple of more discussions with you. Um, what, what I wanted to... Um, sort of uh, share with you here is if you have ever faced abuse or taken an action, uh, please let us know. Uh, just wanted to call out that we are here to support you to help amplify your voice in all anonymity. I think the the, uh, the form here, it is a form, if you go to bit.ly slash WTM hyphen years hyphen you, your responses are anonymous. And um, you know, it, it may be shared publicly with the intention of inspiring others who are in similar situations of abuse or harassment. So if any of you want to contribute to sort of sharing uh, either your experiences or way you've combated and very untoward experience that happened to you, please feel free to share that with us. Um, moving ahead, I think what we have next for you is some of the tools that uh, will probably help you stay safe online. 
right? And um, there are a lot of actors who are involved in case of an online abuse because violence against women doesn't happen in vacuum, right? Um, so when we interviewed a lot of women who have been victims of online violence, uh, just in the in the urge to develop a framework to say who are the actors who can we reach out to for help, right? And um, obviously there is a target, um, you know, who is who is who is probably the victim here, uh, and this could be somebody who, um, you know, who who could be a public figure or who, who could be probably you or me, right? Um, and obviously there's a perpetrator. So when it comes to perpetrator. It's somebody who causes the um, uh, harm. So here it could be somebody who is like the instigator, who's actually do, doing, um, you know, who's actually performing the violence. Or he could also have some followers who are actually helping him do this violence, right? So, uh, and, and this person typically in an online, um, you know, online world, it is this person who's using internet as a tool to cause harm to another person. And the followers sort of just amplify the instigator, um, you know, sort of trigger them even more in some cases. And what I wanted to call out is there's an entire support network that exists to empower these victims uh, to handle the harassment. This could uh, really include professional networks like colleagues, your employers, uh, people from your personal network of friends, uh, you know, support from the community. Right. Or even support from, say, media. Right. There are a lot of journalists also writing about these stories. Uh, so that is one level of support network. The next is uh, third party actors like, uh, you know, people who are who are assigned to manage harassment. This could be legal. This could be the police. This could be NGOs that act as advocates. Um, and finally, uh, probably one that um, you know hurts me the most to share about are silent bystanders. These are people who um, you know who probably view an accident like this, but neither amplify nor aid it. They just remain passive observers of the situation. And some of these tools and techniques, and you know this awareness, is to call out that we need less of silent bystanders. We need more people being out there supporting the victim in helping them sort of come come out of this uh, really untoward exp uh, experience that has happened to them very quickly i'll i'll you know just throw some light on a user's journey and the reason i do this is for you to um, you know sort of just have a look at you know how does that how does that whole journey look like right um, so first there is um, there is a target um, who probably takes some action online, right? That is one actor. The other actor is perpetrator who becomes aware of this target's action. And what are the different kinds of things that, uh, different kind of actions that both of them perform, right? Uh, firstly, it is important for the target to understand, are they aware that they might be targeted? Are they using the right tools that are available in each of the social media platforms to, um, to promote and to support privacy, right? Are they prepared for that attack? If somebody is going to scrub your personally identifiable information, is there something you know how to uh, you know, come out of it, right? Um, so in, 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 in all cases, there is a clear case of attack, right? In, in, in from a, per, a perpetrator standpoint, um, the perpetrator actually researches about the target, potentially waits for the target to take certain action and incites the followers to sort of join in this attack. Eventually, in both cases, there is an attack. What happens is, um, you know, you, you have to find uh, the right ways to sort of deal with this, right? Um, one thing you could do as a target is to block that person immediately. There are also other things like you can report to the platform, you can report to the police, or unfortunately, like the research said, like Arya echoed, you could shut down that social media temporarily as well. And sometimes it also helps in making other actors, such as either the support network or the third party actors that I spoke about, in making them aware of the attack so that they can help you uh, in, in probably arriving at the right um, plan of action to ensure that the perpetrator doesn't continue uh, aspects like this. Um, now, since since we know what the problem is, 
uh, I just wanted to take um, some time to talk about general tips to stay safe online, right? And uh, these three tips that I've put out here are probably common to any social media or any platform that you're potentially going to get, um, you know, that there is a scope for online violence to happen. Uh, it's important for us as users of social media um, to be fully aware on, you know, just controlling what people can see about us. Who can see my profile picture? Who can see where I have, where I was, um, you know, last, right? Which location was I last? Uh, who, who is it that who could see all my posts? Who can comment on my posts? There's so many settings online. Any any platform you go to your account, there's a ton of security and privacy settings that can be enforced. So ensure you control what people can see. You can limit the people who can see your post, who can like search for you, um, you know, on that particular platform. And if 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 it's a if it's a platform which exposes a lot of personal photographs, like Instagram or Facebook, you could also make there is options to make your photos private. Right. The second thing is, and this is probably like one of the most important things is don't let your potential stalkers know where you are. We love going to these exotic locations and, you know, geotagging, saying I'm in Bali, I'm in Singapore. But sometimes try not to use geotags. And I have um, I've also received this advice from somebody who is a specialist in the info security field saying, even if you want to geotag, don't do it while you're at that location, right? You probably come back home after a holiday and then you probably tag it because you don't want your potential stalkers to know where exactly they are, right? Sometimes it helps to even turn off your location services, especially for your social media apps, right? Um, and finally, know that every platform has a way to report or block harassers, right? If you have to place people in your restricted list, if, if you foresee threat from anyone, please put them in the block list uh, on the restricted list. And this would probably help you to ensure that your information is uh, is further not shared publicly, right? Um, and this is this could also be useful if you want to avoid any confrontations, right? What I'm going to do next in the next over the next few slides is specifically talk about features in each of the social media sites which we predominantly engage in, right? Um, so let's start with Twitter. I think one one thing that um, you can take care of is creating multiple accounts. Sometimes, um, you know, and multiple accounts help in two ways. Personally, I feel if you get hacked, you can use an alternate account to tell your followers saying you've been hacked from this account. Please refrain from engaging with any tweets that come out from this account. The second thing is if you are using Twitter, both say for your business and for your personal lives, sometimes you want to separate the two, right? Perhaps you want to... Um, you know, state views which not, might not be the same as your organizations or as your communities. So in that case, it helps to have multiple accounts just to just to you know separate out your personal and your professional uh, views in many cases. Uh, next is change your privacy settings on Twitter. And trust me, I'm 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 happy to wait for a couple of minutes if you want to try this right now. It's a great activity for you to do while we're at the session. If you click on your profile and go into settings and privacy, um, and you know, in turn go to privacy and safety, there is a way you can protect your tweets. So if you click on protect your tweets, unless you give somebody explicit uh, permission or if they're following you, only then will they able to even see your posts, right? I feel this is a very powerful feature in Twitter that many of us don't know about. Uh, some of some of these points might be repetitive from the general tips, but I thought it was important for me to, you know, also explicitly call out. We have spoken about reporting and blocking abusers. Um, this slide also talks about how is it that you do for, uh, you know, in case of Twitter, right? How do you block reporter in? in so what you do is you click on that upside uh, down arrow uh, in the upper right corner of your tweet and you can report your tweet, right? Um, don't geotag. Uh, posting your location while you're at it might be, um, you know, very detrimental. So, uh, you know, and, and geotagging requires you to opt in. So only if you opt in, will your default location be shown? So 
I would best suggest you, uh, you know, disable that option of auto geolocation, um, you know, being enabled. Finally, uh, prevent yourself from getting hacked. Ensure you have a, a strong password. You enable login verification. Sometimes with this feature, if if there is another device through which you're logging in, you get an email. So it's very easy for you to quickly troubleshoot and report any hack in case your account has been hacked. So again, you can use your account settings, go to security, enable login verification. That would help you on Twitter as a platform. Uh, moving ahead to Facebook, uh, I think, um, you know, many of us use Facebook so extensively and there are multiple features that have also evolved on Facebook as a platform. So I would really urge you to go to that, uh, you know, privacy and settings tab and see what all are the options, what are all the controls that you could actually give to your account. Uh, three most things that I found the most relevant here in this case is control what people can see. You, there is an option to put uh, people in um, restricted lists. You can also customize who can actually see your post or who can't actually see a certain post, right? Use that to your advantage, use that well. Uh, don't use geotags on your post. And I feel Facebook as a, as a platform is somewhere where we put, where we use maximum geotag, right? You go to a fancy restaurant, you put that in there. The world doesn't need to know in exactly when you're there because it could pot potentially be something at like 12 a.m. You're with a couple of um, you know friends and you know it's not safe. If if you're going to be three of you and they're going to be five people who want to like sort of attack you, uh, even on a physical setting, that's something you want to avoid. So don't geotag. Uh, and there's always uh, you know um, ways in which you can report and block harassers. Um, find ways to do it uh, you know using the platform it's it's very intuitive it's very easy for us to just go perform a few clicks and enable these safety options the next one that i'm going to talk about is linkedin i think many of us are in linkedin for professional reasons but there's enough enough examples to uh, on linkedin where people are interacting with you beyond personal uh, professional capacities right so before accepting any LinkedIn request or any LinkedIn connection, check for your degrees of separation. What do I mean by that? Um, are, they, are they your first level of degree? Like, is, do you have a lot of common mutual friends? Are you, do you have mutual friends from a particular organization or for, from a particular institute? LinkedIn actually tells you if they're first level, second level, or third level of connection, right? Do they work in your industry? Is there any similar potential overlap between the work that you do and your potential connection. If not, don't accept them. Uh, if you receive any unsolicited message, uh, you can decide to block them, right? Just click on the three dots at the top right and report that conversation. And LinkedIn as a platform has its own set of rules to uh, sort of deal with such uh, users, right? You can also block any person you want from even viewing your profile or contacting you. You All you have to do is go to the person's profile, click on more, and click on report or block, and just follow the next steps of instructions. Um, this is, and since LinkedIn is such a, uh, is, is a professional um, medium, uh, many of us do put, put in our resumes there, right? And many of your resumes have phone numbers, email IDs, home addresses, uh, ensure if you're putting them on LinkedIn, you either mask them or you remove them, right? If someone wants to contact you, they'll find a way to contact you through LinkedIn as a platform and not directly through your phone. So uh, it's it's always safe to mask these details or remove them out for your own online safety. Uh, moving on to Instagram. Um, so few of the things that you could do is enable two-factor authentication to ensure that you can log in safely, irrespective of which device you're logging in from. Uh, like I said, if you're logging in from an unknown device, uh, Instagram instantly triggers an email to you saying, "Do you identify? Um, you know, do you identify this activity?" Right? Uh, we've spoken about choose who sees your posts with a private account in Instagram, unless you, uh, you know, if you enable the setting. Uh, private account with if you put your private account on 
uh, every request, every follower request that you get from then on, you'll have to explicitly approve them. So if you're not comfortable approving someone, you can uh, you can you know just deny that request, right? It's it's one level of security that you are putting in place for yourself. Block anyone you don't want to see with your posts. And I've I've sort of said, how can you use the block user feature? Uh, control the comments you want to see, right? If you want, um, if you see a comment that you um, you re really don't want on your post, there is a way of deleting that comment, right? If you want to disable all comments on that post, you can use the advanced setting to do that by turning off commenting. So there are a lot of features that platforms have, you know, done extensive research to ensure their users are safe. Sometimes we're just not aware of it, right? Finally. Uh, if you see, um, you know, any case of abuse, bullying, harassment, impersonation, lot like I, I, so many of you shared your experiences as well. If you want to report a comment, please, there is a way to do it, right? Um, click on that specific post and say report, and the platform will take care. Finally, the last platform I want to talk to you about is the one that is probably the most used in the country is WhatsApp, uh, and I'm. You know, I've actually seen the evolution of how WhatsApp has, you know, incorporated a, a lot of visibility and a lot of privacy into the platform, right? So you, there is a tons of ways to control your privacy settings. Uh, in, when it comes to your profile photo, when it comes to your last seen status, when it comes to, you know, seen by, um, uh, you know, just your last seen, you can enable uh, that option for everyone or for certain contacts only. And it's very simple. You just click on those three dots, you go to settings, account, privacy, and you can enable or customize the way you want to stay, um, you know, the way you want to look at your privacy in the platform. Uh, block unwanted users. There might be a lot of cases where, you know, somebody would have got your um, phone number from say, um, you know, any directory, right? Today data is, is like the new oil. Um, if you really want to block someone you don't know, feel free to do that. Um, you know, you just have to tap add and there is a block list that you can add that particular person to. Um, turn off red receives. Like while all of us love to see the blue tick, uh, sometimes if you want a, a certain level of privacy with uh, all users, you can turn off read receipts. The way to do it, click on those three dots, settings, account, privacy and turn off red receipts. Um, delete or report spam. I think uh, you know inside inside the app, there is a way where you can report your report either a contact or a group. Use that to your discretion and advantage. Um, very few of us would probably have enabled two-step verification, right? If you have to create a six-digit pin or enable finger lock to log into the app, do that if you think your um, you know, your phone is likely to, you know, be get into the hands of a person who would potentially, uh, you know, read, like open your app, for example. Finally, I wanted to let you know that, um, you know, sometimes there is an option that, you know, we're added to random groups where, you know, one of our friends adds us, but there's so many unknown people in that group. Understand that there is an option to leave any group by your choice, right? And there's also an option to disable people adding you randomly from groups until you have, um, you know, given them the permission. So instead of somebody randomly adding you to groups, you can enable um, them to invite you to a group through a personal message. And if you think that that message, that group is authentic and you want to join, then you click on that, right? It's not somebody who directly puts you in a group with 250 more people. Right, so these are a few of the things, uh, very little things that probably uh, add a level of uh, security to our online habits. Uh, some of the very interesting things, and a lot of this was very new when you know I was researching about it, is um, there are a lot of services, and may, in some of which have to be paid, right, which will delete your data from broker sites. Uh, and today there are so many of it, right? There's so much, you know, you, you give your information to a certain company, but then they'll be in partnership with another company and that other company also probably gets your information, right? So if you have a reason to believe that, uh, you know, you may be targeted for doxing, 
it is always wise to consider paid service like privacy duck or delete me to ensure that you uns uh, you know it helps you unsubscribe from all the sites especially the data broker sites right um, another activity which you can try right now here is you can use the tool have i been pawned right it's p w n e d uh, to see if your email address and password may have been exposed to any one of the large scale data breaches so if you give your email address you actually get a list of sites and when i tried this for the first time i was shocked i was like oh my god and i quickly went on and you know changed my security uh, password um you know used stronger passwords and and that's when i actually realized saying sometimes you don't even know that some uh, you know uh, online violence or online attacks could happen to you so i would urge you if 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 you uh, would like we could we could pause for a couple of seconds to see uh, if you could go to have i been pwned.com enter your email address and see if your email address is actually under attack okay so while i let you do that i will move on by saying that uh, you know by using a virtual private network you can encrypt all your online activity in order to protect yourself from hackers uh, a lot of corporations today do this but i wanted to also um, you know educate you or make you aware that an option like this can is available to ensure that your ip address is not exposed right um another very interesting activity that um i sort of did is just try googling myself right uh, by doing this you could you would possibly see um you know all the way all all the ways in which somebody could know more about you right is there is when you google about you is there some photos that are like very personal uh, of your holidays with family that come up if if you have to remove them from somewhere please go ahead and do it right sometimes uh, it may not be possible to scrub all your information from the internet but at least searching and being aware of what is exposed might be helpful right um there's also a tool called uh, block together app so this is one way uh, to deal with users who um, you know who you blocked right because block together will automatically block any account that tries to follow you that's been active for under 7 days and that has under 15 followers right or you know uh, you know some app that your followers have blocked it it helps you ensure that there is another layer of security uh from the wisdom of your friend circle finally i would also urge you to check out techsafety.org this app explores online violence of six different categories harassment impersonation cell phone safety device safety location safety and online safety um i i hope like i'm sure this was a ton of information and i don't the intent is not to overwhelm you but the intent is to ensure that um, you know these pieces of information are something that you have handy when you really need to know if if you've really encountered online violence many times i've heard stories from people who who've probably been subjected to an online attack but weren't even aware that something like this is online violence right and um uh the last slide in this segment that i have for you is uh you know some tools for allies and i uh, pranay has highlighted this i've spoken about this saying sometimes you might not be the victim right you might you might just be able to empower somebody who is the victim by supporting them in the right way by knowing what is it that you can do to respond in the right way right uh the first thing that you can do is engage by checking in on that person just ensuring how are they experiencing do they need any uh you know well being support uh just centering the person being harassed and uh catering to their needs or just listening just being an active listener might do a world of good to them right second it might be helpful for you to support by documenting that harassment because it might it might help in advocating it it might uh, help in uh, letting others know taking inspiration from how to handle such a case and come out of it or it could be just for reporting cases later on um you know just in case 
there is something that um, you know the victim decides to report to lodge it as a cyber crime all these documentation would be very helpful um directly engaging with the harasser by blocking reporting or shutting down the violence might be helpful instead of one person sort of blocking if there are multiple people who do it i think each platform is more sensitive enough to that um, you know to the perpetrator finally distracting um, you know from the harassment and violence uh, is is a is a is a very powerful thing to do the way you can do that is sort of validate the person who is experiencing the violence by saying hey this is a case of impersonation this is not the true identity of that person might might be really helpful not only to the victim but to all the people who are consuming an online uh, you know the result of an online attack um this leads me to pause for a minute and um bring a few friends into the room uh to discuss what are the ways in which you have changed your behavior or examples of ways in which you engage um online to ensure that you are more safe or your friends are more safe um and i want to call upon purnima i want to call upon ramya and dhruva to sort of take us through their own experiences and answer this question for us why we do that i also encourage you uh to share your uh, to share your opinions on the chat if that is something that you are comfortable sharing we would love to hear from you as well right um so yeah okay great we have a full house so uh let's start with purnima hi everyone actually personally i am using whatsapp uh, for more times so uh, i have seen i come across some news that uh, some of this facebook account profiles has been ha pro hacked and uh, photos has been uh, replaced by some vulnerable pictures so uh, i go through that news and police was announced that everyone should uh, in a particular a particular region everyone should uh, enable that two step verification so i was sharing that message to my friends and relatives also uh, that was something that i have done uh, like a quick response to something that i have done uh, to make uh, everyone safe in online and also like uh, starting uh, because of start getting a lot of unwanted messages i deleted uh, like messenger app from my phone uh, so every uh, social media app you are using first you have to go to settings and uh, make sure that you know about all the privacy settings that is available for you uh, like uh, enabling the profile picture guard in facebook that kind of thing uh, that are the things that i have experienced right thank you so much purnima um, very helpful thank you ramya over to you Hi everyone. Uh, thank you, Lakshya and Arya, for the opportunity, and uh, thank you, Purnima, for sharing your views. Uh, according to me, the most sensitive thing that can happen to any person is hate speech or hate symbols, and mobbing a person purposefully uh, by a group of people on social media. So when this situation occurs, we generally get demotivated or discouraged, and won't prefer to share our ideas anymore. but don't do that uh, instead immediately reach out to people it can be family it can be a friend a senior whom you ask queries and reach out it can be a manager it can be a team lead who will have the best possible solution and can help us work on this together so this can actually help boost our confidence and face further challenges also don't create a negative environment the same way which they had done to us instead create a positive environment and maintain privacy on social media where you interact the most which will help us avoid these kind of issues right right thank you so much ramya i think this is where just being aware of that support network that exists for us uh, is so important thanks for sharing that dhruva we'd love to hear you next dhruva you are on mute Hi everyone. Uh 
thank you for uh, inviting me lakshya and arya and having this wonderful session uh, so yeah definitely i uh, agree to all the points uh, that purnima and uh, ramya shared uh, that we should take care of uh, the security but uh, with that i also believe that uh, while uh, limiting our own uh, securities and privacies uh, we should not be uh, stay away uh, from the opportunities uh, that we deserve so uh, regarding the behavior changes uh, i would say i did not uh, have to uh, do much uh, changes as i think uh, uh, law and justice uh, is already in my blood through my uh, father and uh, sister so i have been raised into the environment of uh, being positively outspoken uh, by default but uh, when it comes to online safety uh, three things i would like to emphasize on is uh, be alert uh, be cautious i always keep my uh, conversations uh, straight forward and i keep keep my uh, limits very stronger and uh, keep reminding people uh, whenever uh, it's needed how many times it is that uh, this much will be tolerated and this much is not tolerated and uh, if you any time find that the conversation is going into the direction that you are not comfortable with then keep the screenshots and proof available with you uh, that can be helpful to you in future so uh, second thing is uh, be brave uh, we definitely feel vulnerable uh, when we pass through such situations but uh, take a day or two or some time but uh, share it with your friends and family and uh, speak out that what you are going through and third thing is that uh, create your support system uh, and keep them aware i always uh, keep my friends and family and trustworthy people team members and everyone in loop and informed that in any point of time in case they might need to jump into to help me or uh, get me out of the situation so yeah three things uh, be alert keep proofs uh, be brave and uh, find your tribe uh, and love them hard yeah thanks great dhruva thank you so much i think it was very well summarized answer thank you so much for that arya i also want to give some space to you in case you want to add something sure uh, just a very small um, hack or <laughs> practical tip if you will so when you're sharing statuses on whatsapp right like i used to um, share more personal things on whatsapp because i would think that you know only people i know are here and maybe slightly more public things on instagram and other channels and later i realized that you know if i have anybody's contact on my phone uh, they also get to um maybe see my status right and um eventually what i did was move all my contacts to google contacts and have just absolutely uh, you know those bare minimum contacts on my phone so that um, you know only they have access to whatever i'm posting regularly right um so that's a very uh, small hack right there and also just to again emphasize on what lakshya mentioned like on your resume try not to add your contact number or your home address home address especially even if you're sending it to companies like they're not going to send your present so you don't have to add that i had a really bad experience where somebody found my resume from somewhere and the guy actually came outside my apartment and sent me a picture and asked asked me if you live here so that was a very spooky experience that i had uh, so try not to add your contact number and your uh, address on your resume so sure, thank you so much for those practical tips uh, thank you dhruva ramya purnima for joining us uh, we'll get you back very soon thank you Moving ahead, I think the next segment will be about um, reporting online violence, and I would hand it over to Arya to take us through this module. Thank you, thanks, Lakshya. Um, so again, you know, a very, very essential and important topic, and I saw that in the comments, some of you had asked about my personal experience as well, um, as to how did the police react, how did I respond to the situation, and so on. Um, I will come to that. um before we go ahead um, you know just a small trigger note again here as well if it is disturbing for you please feel free to step out and um take your time off and then come back uh, at a later point um now again this example that we did just go through earlier um i'm sure you're all aware of it as well the boys locker room incident um but for those of you who are unaware right there was an instagram group where um there were minors and adults as well and they were sharing morphed pictures of girls um including that of their classmates um and commenting on their bodies 
And when this actually came out, this information came out, uh, apparently the group was uh, deleted um, and you know, all of these perpetrators switched off their phones. Um, the police actually wrote to Instagram and got the details of all of the group members and whatever was shared within that group. Um, and uh, the police also sort of arrested the admin of the group. And I know that at a later point, more information had come in, um, you know, related to this incident. I have, I mean, since May, I've not seen um, any other update on this. Um, but, you know, just sharing it here to let you know that um, no information is private under the eye of law. So if um, somebody has done something on Instagram or on any such social media platforms um, and the law requires uh, them to provide that information for them, uh, you know, to, to make a, a decision about uh, the case or to make a judgment or um, to, to identify the perpetrators, um, then th that information will be exposed, right? Um, the other example here is, you know, uh, I, I don't know if you know, uh, but there's this actress Parvati. Um, she acted in a lot. She is a Malayalam actor, and she's acted in several great films. Um, one of them is Uyere, and the other is Virus, uh, in, in a bunch of different films. I'm sure you can find. Um, and she was trolled online, uh, you know, and uh, this person who made uh, extremely, uh, I don't know, uh, threatening, uh, you know comments and even rape threats and acid attack threats, um, he was arrested, right? Um, so the one comment again that Rana made in her initial video, right, that people told her this is happening online and not in real life. But if somebody does abuse you online, uh, they can get punished in real life as well. <laughs> so just picking all these examples to uh, convey that, right? Um, now, um, reinforcing the, uh, those points, cyber criminals may face imprisonment and fines as punishment if found guilty. Um, and the particular act which deals with all of these uh, laws under you know, governing cyber crime is the IT Act uh, 2000. You can find this um, act online. Please Google for it. Please uh, search for it and read through and, and create your own understanding of, of what our laws um, speak. Um, and while some of these crimes that we discussed today don't directly fall under the IT Act, they actually fall under a criminal offense, which is the Indian Penal Code or the IPC. Um, and I will not go into too much detail, but this again is a quick summary of uh, various offenses or online, um, you know, kinds of online violence and which sections or act. Um, they actually fall under. So you can notice that some of these fall under the IT Act, like uh, violation of privacy. But there are several of those which are actually criminal offense, um, including you know sending defamatory messages over email or stalking and a bunch of different things, right? So to anybody who thinks that uh, whatever is happening is normal, there is no point if I take action, please don't think so. Um, there are laws here to protect you, and you are entitled to speak up um, and then call it out. Um, again, fun fact, because uh, cyber crimes happen in the world of internet, there is no jurisdiction. So it means that if you have let's say in my case, right, if when I was being stalked online or harassed online, I could have gone to any police uh, station and reported that. I need not have gone just to my local police station uh, to file my complaint. So be mindful wherever you are, uh, know that you can file a complaint in any police station. Um, and also, if you want to file an FIR, the police cannot say no to you. So um, it is your decision whether or not to actually lodge an FIR. And if you do lodge an FIR, it will be taken up as a case. And you know they will start the investigation. There will be court proceedings. Um, or they might um, ask you to settle or however that will proceed. But essentially, uh, you have the option to file an FIR and actually lodge it as a criminal case um, or under the IT Act. Um, and the police will have to accept your FIR. They cannot say things like, uh, this is such a small thing, you know, why don't you let it go and things like that, right? So just be mindful that if you really want to take action, even the police cannot say no to you. 
Now, how do you report uh, any such incident? So the first thing is, you know, I'm sure you um, will or you can report through the social media websites that you're using. So Instagram or LinkedIn or whichever website it is, um, report uh, any posts that you find um, obscene or, or harmful or threatening um, or report people, block people. You can do all of that. Uh, you can file an FIR in the local police station or at a cyber cell. Now, otherwise, you can also go to the National Cybercrime Reporting Portal. Uh, and I'm hoping that we will be able to send the, the links to these uh, to you or the tech or however that works. But essentially, you can also Google and find out this portal. Um, and you can file an online complaint against uh, cybercrimes. And they have particular emphasis on you know anything sexual in nature, anything involving children, and so on. And your complaint will then be forwarded to the local police station, who will then contact you and take appropriate action from there. Uh, if you are aware of any um, hacking incidents or um, you know any any cyber attacks, uh, you can report it online to the Indian Computer Emergency Response Team (CRTIM). Um, with that, uh, talking a bit about my personal experience. So the first thing I uh, experienced when I received a barrage of emails was uh, shock, disbelief. I didn't know uh, what was happening. Like it took me a while to comprehend, you know, because out of the blue, you get so many emails. Uh, and I woke up one morning and I saw this. So um, I was disturbed to say the very least. Uh, the immediate next thing I did was contact uh, my support system, which includes uh, my parents, my colleagues, uh, people who are close to me in the city. Because like I said, I was alone there. So I contacted them. I intimated them about it. Um, and I took two weeks off from work, two or one week off from work, because I couldn't get myself to show up at work. Um, and once I had uh, you know, met a psychologist or a counselor, I calmed myself down. Um, I had a lot of guilt um, and it, it's sort of like victim blaming, right? You blame yourself for whatever was happening. So I had a lot of that going on. Um, but once um, I started overcoming that, I put together my thoughts on paper. I actually wrote down every single thing that happened. Um, I went to a lawyer, I prepared a complaint and I went to the cyber cell and I uh, gave it to the police. They asked me if I wanted to file an FIR. I said I did not. I wanted to leave it as a complaint. I did not want to take it too further. Uh, reflecting, I feel maybe I should have filed an FIR. Um, but uh, that complaint was still good enough. Like uh, the police actually called this individual to the station, uh, inquired about these things. He admitted to having deleted the, the domain name and the email ID he had, um, and so on. Um, and that was it. I've never been contacted by this person again. Um, and yeah, in terms of my experience with the police, they were very, very friendly. Uh, they made me feel comfortable, uh, to say the least. And I was fortunate enough to have other people also who came with me and, you know, sort of supported me throughout the process. Um, so that was my experience very briefly. And on that note, have you ever reported cybercrime? And if you have, we would, uh, love to hear your experiences and i know lakshya has a couple of people uh, joining us as well so over to you lakshya thanks arya um i had i had Purnima who has had an experience reporting cyber crime so Purnima, if you can join us and share your experience with us yeah the yeah. most important thing uh, that i have to say is if you come across some cyber crime uh, don't be ashamed of it because it is not your mistake. The mistake is uh, some person has done the mistake and you are going to report it. So uh, I don't have any personal experience that I have report, but it was a uh, like a, through YouTube, a man was uh, abusing uh, uh, some socially active woman in Kerala, like first woman, uh, Woman Commission Chairman, uh, like uh, a dubbing artist, that kind of thing. So when it comes, uh, the, uh, that thing became very dramatical news and all the things. Uh, and we uh, many YouTubers suggest as to report this crime, and me and mo most of my friends are reported this crime. The fact is, uh, if you uh, report the crime, 
it uh, doesn't matter whether some action is taken or uh, not but the thing is uh, the count matters if you have reported if you same problem is reported from many peoples uh, the government or the authorities will take action like uh, here kerala government start to uh, take an amendment act uh, uh, like in, uh, giving new acts about uh, making strong rules about uh, online security so uh, the thing is it is your re responsibility to report it if you come across such a crime that's it. Right. right thank you so much purnima and i think you really brought um, what i had to say next which is if you experience online violence remember that people's choice to commit violent actions is never never your fault um or you know your control it's it's not your fault and all you can do is probably report it and uh, you know get him the get him the punishment or at least get the behavior of him or her not repeating that crime again right um so yeah thank you so much uh, purnima uh, here are a list of um, articles which we believe will be great sources for you to read more about Uh, i know i i found uh, a few questions on resources in the chat as well so if you go to bit.ly/safety-resources you will get a pdf with the links to each of these resources which you could probably read at your leisure uh, i'll just pause for like about 10 seconds for you to make a note of that uh, bitly link bit.ly/safety-resources great with that i think um i just wanted to um you know share with you that we understand that these are incredibly difficult problems to solve right uh, sharing tips and tools and spreading awareness is one thing but uh, sort of solving this is a whole different challenge right and if if you have ideas if you have solutions tech enabled solutions to um, you know sort of creatively solve problems like these it would be amazing uh, to sort of hear your stories to sort of hear some solutions tech enable solutions that you have built for your college for your society for your community and eventually that could probably be a solution for the country so i would encourage you to dream big use technology to sort of solve a few of these problems um and with that i want you to um sort of reflect on one question which is what is one thing you've learned today that you will commit to doing um with respect to online safety for yourself or for the people around you and to join me to share their inputs is prane prachi and ramya if any of you would also love to share your experiences on the chat box the lot of us reading that please feel free to do that while we get uh, prane ramya and prachi on screen so whom do we start with prachi do we start with you okay yes uh, i hope you can hear me properly yes yes so uh, for me what i learned today is uh, a personal experience like uh, uh, collecting the proof uh, there was a time uh, when i missed something i missed to expose a person's character because i had a proof but it was very painful to keep it to myself i did not open up because i was ashamed that thing happened uh, so you know but now uh, the person is doing it with other people uh, i know it unfortunately i don't have the proof because emotionally i had a baggage with that person so one thing that and second thing that it should not uh, it should not discourage you to become famous so in case if there is some account where uh, i mean in case i want to share something like uh, my technical knowledge or my food recipes or something something i can uh, honest i can obviously have an another account and maintain it for public and for my publicity 
uh, and without any uh, fear uh, i can be safe uh, personally and i can be a public figure as well that's what i understood and now uh, that i have a list of so many p- uh, places where i can see whether i'm safe or not and where uh, where i can report myself uh, uh, report myself for other people <laughs> you know so yeah that's what i learned thank you thank you prachi thank you uh thank you uh what i learned today was first off i removed my resume from linkedin first thing that i did uh second twitter and i act, i was actually a very uh not a very social media friendly person before i joined communities it just becomes a part of the job now uh, but uh, i was not using twitter or linkedin for say over the, over the previous two quarters and i just kind of logged in to maybe i had some updates to share or some networking to do uh, i just only use it on a very resources resource basis and i only share what is needed to be shared on those platforms uh, the other thing is that if you see something definitely report it uh, any form of it you see uh, reported and if someone else is facing it support them be an ally and be a proper ally uh, so be supportive and if if say i i've seen this happen when you know and arya took a lot i arya explained it in a lot of detail but i've seen this happen if you go out and tell your female friend that hey maybe you should report this to the police and uh, the girl is probably inhibited that maybe if an action would be taken in any case of the so push for it action would be taken and uh, take a bold step and a strong stance towards any kind of harassment uh, third thing that i realize understand that cycle of bullying or that cycle of uh harm uh, i think there was a, another term that are suggested i'm forgetting it properly but yeah understand that and if it is a repetitive pattern uh try to get your people away from those patterns be it any place be it your workplace be it your family be it your friend circle anywhere uh just just take a strong stance and just be there uh, last thing that i realized that this this circle here at, at least at you know gdg wtm uh, supported by all these peers it's, it's a strong circle uh, if you're watching this video you definitely in good hands uh, and if you're feeling any kind of support you these people are always around so i think i i've, I've been fortunate enough to be a part of this panel thanks pranay i think uh, you know you you really lived up to like a real great expectation of being a strong ally and i've i've had conversations like this with you before and really all these insights might inspire a lot of allies to uh, actively know more and become more aware of online violence so thank you for that uh, ramya can we hear you next um after this session the two most important things i wanted to do is i would like to check if my email is involved in any data breach and uh, reducing mm-hmm. or limiting the exposure of data and also the usage of vpn from now on thank you thank you so much ramya yes i'm glad that many of these points came from the tools that we discussed arya i also want to give space to you to uh, you know sort of add anything that you want to add as uh, you know your closing remarks absolutely so it's uh, it's an absolute pleasure to have been here um, i think there's nothing like you know going through something um, facing it and now being able to share uh, whatever i little things i can um, and ensure that you know you benefit from it in any way so i'm extremely happy for being here and for having participated with lakshya and with the entire team behind uh, putting this show together uh as one last uh, closing remark i think i um just ask you to listen to yourself be honest with yourself because i know that you will know when you're uncomfortable in any situation professional or personal so if you do feel uncomfortable in any situation don't hesitate to stand up for yourself um that is the only thing i will um uh leave you with thank you so thank much you. thank you prane thank you ramya thank you prachi uh, for joining us today as part of this panel and arya it's been an absolute pleasure to co facilitate this session with you um i quickly want to leave um the audience with one last slide um 
if if you can let us know um, with this deck that we've built for you, if you can let us know, um, you know, things like, did you find the content relevant? Was this entire session helpful? Because it will sort of give us, um, you know, more points to become better, uh, be it with the content. I remember the last time I did um, the session, uh, we did the session together. We got insights about, can we have best practices for WhatsApp? Can we have best practices for Instagram? And that's how that content got into this deck. So we would love to hear your feedback. If you could go to bit.ly slash online safety hyphen feedback and let us know about your experience of this session, it would be great. Uh, finally, yes, thank you. There is a, there is a whole big team uh, behind putting this uh, session together. Um, thank you to each one of you. Uh, not everybody was able to come on screen, but I think each of your con contributions are so, so valuable for us to put together a session like this. I would also like to call out Rana, whom you actually heard uh, in the beginning of this video. She's been a strong advocate of uh, this content and this training. Um, unfortunately, with her being in a different time zone, we couldn't get her in. But I'm glad that you know we had Arya who joined us. And Arya, it takes a lot of courage to share some of those personal experiences that you shared with us. So thank you so much for exhibiting that courage and also inspiring us to probably take the right actions against online violence. Thank you so much to all of you who tuned in. Um, it was a real pleasure uh, sort of chatting with you, engaging with you in the chats. Thank you so much and hope you have a great rest of the evening. Thank you.